John chapter 1, John chapter 1, beginning at verse 35. John chapter 1, beginning at verse 35, and we'll read down to verse 40. Again the next day after John stood and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. And Jesus turned and saw them following, and saith unto them, What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? He saith unto them, Come and see. And they came and saw where he dwelt, and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. We'll take as our text verse number uh, 35 or I'm sorry, verse number 38. And the title of my sermon is, What Seek Ye? What Seek Ye? Jesus, as He lived upon the earth, we find many, many uh, incidents and many uh, different, uh, d different stories, if you will, of what happened, true stories of His life. And uh, in fact, um, uh, things that occurred and conversations that took place. Uh, we find him here in verse 38 uh, as he sought to identify why these folks were attracted to him. What seek ye? What seek ye? And even as the question was asked so very long ago, the question is relevant also in our day. For we live in a world of seekers. People are seeking after something. Uh, and there's all sorts of data at this point that we can go and we can look at. Uh, you can uh, jump on the, uh, the internet and uh, almost get into the minds of people now to see what people are looking for, searching for, what they're seeking. Uh, but what or who are you seeking? Is it wisdom? Is it fame? Is it fortune? Is it pleasure? Are you, are you seeking after comfort, acceptance, security? What seek ye today? Everyone has something for which that they are seeking. And so, as I thought about this message, and I've had, as my notes are scribbled through and written through, and I've kind of contemplated this message. This is originally a... a well, one form of this message was one that I planned to preach last Sunday, but wasn't able to because of the uh, ice storm. Um, the providence of the Lord. Uh, this is the form, this is the version of it that, uh, that I'm preaching this morning. But even today, as you got up, got ready for church, what were you seeking? And this morning, this morning, December 25th, a day that we're told by some is the day of the birth of Christ. But what are people seeking today? As I got up and uh, was thinking about these things and kind of went on and looked on, looked on my Facebook feed and just kind of looked. And a couple days ago, I 
did something I normally don't do. I went I went to two stores. I usually don't I try not to do that anywhere near <laughs> this holiday. But I had to go to had to go to uh, Old Navy. My son needed jeans. And uh, I had to go to Best Buy because I needed a cable modem. Uh, so I realized I was paying $10 a month lease fee on my cable bill and uh, for their modem. So I figured I could save that $10 in a few months. Uh, the modem that I'd pay at Best Buy would pay for itself. So I went, I went to those two places. I found a lot of people were seeking after things. Their new, their new gifts, and gifts for other people and all of that sort of thing. People were stressed out and anxious and caught up in the getting down to the wire, to the closeness of their season. No doubt, no doubt some may have been, uh, may have had some thoughts about the Lord, but the thinking about the language that I heard and the actions that I heard, I would say very, very few did. You know, this morning, we think about, uh, as, 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 folks, as folks do, a lot, of, a lot of folks may get up and they may read Matthew chapter 1, if you want to go over there for a moment. Matthew chapter number 1. Where I work, a lot of folks asked me if I was going to have a Christmas service. And I uh, explained, no, we don't, we don't have a Christmas service because the Sovereign Grace Baptist Church, we're different. I explained that where Christmas came from and the, the, the Catholicism and, and how that Catholicism had brought in some, some pagan holidays and, and incorporated those things in and into the birth of Christ. And I explained those things to them and a lot of people shook their head and said, yeah, I've heard that before. And, uh, understood that. And some people thought I was kidding. I, I think some of them probably thought I was just joking. But, 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 others, others said, well, we, we, we used to go to church. We don't anymore. Some of them said we used to go to church on Christmas, but we don't even do that anymore. But I tell you, whenever you think about seeking and getting excited about something, in Matthew chapter 1, in verse number 21, And she shall bring forth a son, thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Some folks get up and they do go to church on Christmas morning and they talk about a baby in a manger. But Jesus is no longer a baby in a manger. Yes, He was there. And yes, Jesus was born of a virgin. But like I explained it to folks, Mary didn't remain a virgin and Jesus didn't remain a baby. And this is the reality of it all. That Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, was the creator of the world. He came in the form of a man, in the form of a baby, and he grew up. And he is the king of kings and the lord of lords. But I've noticed some things. People get caught up thinking about Jesus as a baby. Why is that? Because a baby is helpless. A baby can't do anything. A baby can't judge. 
the baby's not going to come back as a king. But they do get caught, they do get excited about someone who knows everything, who sees you when you're sleeping, who knows whether you've been bad or good. That guy's name is Santa, and he's a work of fiction. And I noticed on my on my news feeds on on on, on Facebook and so on. That, 10 TV and all of them, they, they were supposedly tracking this work of fiction as he went around the world last night. He didn't stop at my house. I also noticed something about it. I noticed people from all religions celebrate this holiday, including not only Catholics and Protestants, but also some Baptists. I also noticed atheists and humanists, Muslims, all sorts of people join in on this. But folks who don't know Jesus, who don't believe the truth of the Bible, join hand in hand with, with Christmas. Wasiki. Wasiki. A new gift. Mass, a play, we don't have plays here, Christmas sermon, I mean, a lot of things that people look, look for and seek, Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 2 warns us, learn not the way of the heathen, 1 John 5 and verse 2, verse well, 1 John 5, if you want to go over there. 1 John 5 and verse 21 says, Little children, keep yourselves from idols. And then in 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Second Corinthians chapter six and verses fourteen through eighteen. It says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. We're warned to come out from among them and be separate, to be different. You know, throughout the book of Acts, and we're going through the book of Acts on Wednesday night, Paul, as he journeyed among the people there, it says particularly there in Acts chapter 17. In Acts chapter 17, in verse 16, Paul said, or the Bible says about Paul, it says, Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. I see the I see the the the, the 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 temples of Athens and some of those places, and there's a certain kind of a, 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 a physical beauty to them, no question of it. The architecture and the and, 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 and the physical structures of them. There's a beauty in them that uh, some folks would have admired and, and, and looked at. And I can't help but think about this 
season and realize that there's a certain beauty to this season as well. The physical attraction of it, the lights and the, and the senses of it. But whenever we get down to the root of it, are your senses or are your, is your spirit stirred within you? Whenever we talk about these things, of course, whether whether we talk to friends or family, whether we're talking to people on the street and they ask us, what time is your Christmas service? Or ask, what time is your, uh, are you going to have a play? Uh, when... What's Santa going to bring you this year or, or whatever? We want to make sure we tell the truth. We do it in love. Somebody asked me, as I was explaining this, this week as a matter of fact, uh, asked me if I thought that celebrating Christmas would put a person in hell. No, I don't believe that. I don't believe that at all. I believe that your sins put you in hell. I believe that the only way to escape hell is through Jesus Christ. He died on the cross for our sins. But I believe that there is a right way to worship and a wrong way to worship. In fact, in John chapter 4, John chapter 4 and verses 22 and 23. John chapter 4 verses 22 and 23. You worship, you know not what. We know what we worship for salvation. Salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship Him. I may not know what you're seeking, but I can tell you what the Lord is seeking, and that is, the Father seeketh such to worship Him as those who will worship Him in spirit and in truth. We've got to get into God's Word and see what thus saith the Lord. The, 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 the Word. What saith God on these things? we got to be like the Bereans to check God's Word. Sometimes emotion gets caught in there and it does get rather difficult. Especially whenever family's involved. And I understand that. However, we've got to be sure. Are, are we... Man pleasers, or will we please the Lord? In Proverbs chapter 3, verses 18 through 7, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord. Depart from evil. We have some excellent words here to live by. Uh, we have to highlight these words. We have to underline them, to memorize them, to write them down, hang them in our home. Uh, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. All your ways acknowledge Him. He shall direct your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. Depart from evil. Where will we stand? As Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. What do we need to do? Well, what should we seek after? What, what is it that we should be doing? Well, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter number 2.
begin at verse 1. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of, of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Here's a man, Paul, who he had been around some of the world's greatest philosophers. He had heard some of the greatest speeches, probably some of the greatest orders. He would heard them. He had... And he could probably spill out some great words of man's wisdom, but he said, no, when I was with you, I didn't come to you with, with, uh, with excellency of speech, man's wisdom, but I came determining only to know Jesus Christ and Him crucified. What seek ye? I'm going to tell you what... what, what, what what, what, what you should what should be following, what, what you should be seeking. Let us present what the world needs. Not Jesus Christ in the world's wisdom. Not Jesus Christ in the world's fiction. But in the truth of God's Word. Jesus, the Creator of the world. Who created this world not billions and millions of years ago, but some few thousand years ago. Jesus, the creator of the world. Jesus, who was made flesh and dwelt among men. Jesus, who willingly took our sins upon himself, though he himself knew no sin. He died willingly on the cross. Jesus, who was buried for three days, three nights. Jesus, who rose again, having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible for death to hold him. Jesus, who is right now at the right hand of God the Father, making intercession for us, and one day coming back in all his glory, reign upon this earth. Jesus, the judge that we all must face. Jesus, King of kings. And the Lord of Lords. What seek ye today? May the Lord bless you. This message. Brother uh, Brother Justin, would you please?